at that point in the pregnancy. While Graham's bill is mostly political maneuvering intended to shore up the conservative vote at home, attempts to slowly but surely peel away reproductive freedoms are succeeding at the state level. Last night, Missouri lawmakers passed a bill requiring a 72-hour wait period between a doctor visit and an abortion. It contains no exceptions of rape or incest. The Missouri law, which now heads to Democratic Governor Jay Nixon's desk for approval, is one of more than 30 separate abortion restrictions in the state this year alone, and it is only the month of May. Nearly three dozen laws, even though there's only one clinic still providing abortion services in the state of Missouri. This afternoon, Jay Nixon released a statement calling the bill, quote, an extreme proposal. Extreme it may be, but if the governor signs off on it, the 20-week ban could force that lone clinic to shut down. And for the women left behind, their only options will be to cross state lines or worse. Joining me now is MSNBC.com national reporter Erin Carmone and from Chicago, former RNC chair Michael Steele. Chairman Steele, let me start with you. Okay. I understand that, that some people will have issues relating to you know, a woman's right to choose, abortions, yeah. etc. But the, the targeting of this one clinic in the state seems a little bit extreme to me. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I guess at a certain level, you're right. I mean, they've effectively, as we've seen in Texas and elsewhere, uh, winnowed a lot of, a lot of these uh, companies or businesses out of business. Uh, and so now I think, you know, the states are, are trying, to, trying to put their final imprimatur on the question of abortion. Uh, and you know what? That's probably how it should be. This is a matter that should be decided like, by the states that is, you know, like other matters, gay marriage and others, other issues are decided by the states more and more. Uh, a federal uh, law on, on these matters, I think, is much more problematic in that uh, you, you see the politics in South Carolina, for example, uh, and in Kentucky with... Uh, with uh, Mitch McConnell playing itself out on a national stage where these decisions, I think, are going to be more and more in the future decided at the local level. Um, Erin, I got to say, I find it disconcerting what's happening at the state level as far as women's reproductive freedoms. Um, in particular, in, in Missouri, this clinic has been under constant surveillance by anti-choice activists. Um, their goal is to document any time an ambulance comes to the clinic. We talk a lot about sort of conservative theory and conservative ideology and how in some cases it can be t somewhat hypocritical given the fact that it's about freedoms and personal liberties. And here is an example of conservatives in the far right wing targeting women for a procedure that is constitutional, it is legal, it has been sanctioned by the Supreme Court. Right. Well, there's also an inconsistency. You know, um, Michael Steele mentioned the federal level. Republicans have repeatedly introduced on the federal level as well these kinds of curtailments of reproductive well, freedom. Lindsey Graham with his yeah. big chart. And they passed right. many of them under the Bush administration. So, of course, it's all about states' rights until, of course, it comes to a woman's body. When it comes to the state level where they still have a lot of control because the president has said that he would veto the 20-week ban, uh, you are seeing absolute devastation of access to reproductive uh, health care Abortion, contraception is something that they've also come out for. You know, you've seen with the Hobby Lobby case. Um, in Missouri, though, there really has been a lot of resistance. There was just a 72-hour filibuster, uh, the women's filibuster protests on the steps. They're really pushing for Governor Jay Nixon. I think his statement was very encouraging to veto it. Um, so there is, there are pockets of resistance in the states. Where Republicans have taken over government entirely, that is generally bad news for women's reproductive rights, but there's still room for pushback. You know, I mean, Michael Steele, the, the other thing this does is it gets Republicans not talking about the economy well, or jobs yeah. or, or, you know, uh, economic policy, an area where maybe there could be some actual debate and, you know, collaboration. It's, it's once again, this becomes a party that is trying, that is, that is focused on women's issues. And I will just say from a pure sort of optical perspective, Perspective. Lindsey Graham on the floor of the U.S. Senate with a big chart about 20-week <laughs> abortion bans. I mean, is that a good thing for the Republican Party at this well, point? Well, I, I don't think that's the conversation America is engaging in. And again, uh, you know, I said it as RNC chairman, and I say it now. It doesn't mean that the issue is not the, you know, not an important issue, and certainly it is for a lot of Americans. But as a, as a national party and as leadership in the Congress and in the Senate, we have to focus on what is what is pushing Americans' buttons right now. Is the lack of jobs, is the lack of economic mobility, it's a, a focus on poverty, it's a focus on those types of issues, uh, and these choices that individuals are making in their lives as a national party, we should be, as we've argued, supportive of those individual freedoms to make those choices, um, and that's where the state comes in, and that's where the state's right arguments tends to come in. We're good. 
good on guns when it comes to states' rights, but not so much on other issues. And I think people see that hypocrisy and are repelled by it. And I think as a national party, we need to back off of that, let the states work this out. And in Missouri and Texas and elsewhere, those tides turn. People decide ultimately what they want their state to look like on this issue, and they'll act accordingly. The national level, we have bigger fish to fry right now, and I think we need to focus on that. Yeah, Aaron, I mean, Jay Nixon was almost impeached because apparently um, state workers re released a list of concealed uh, gun permits to the federal government as part of a broader investigation. He's under fire by conservatives in his own state. He's a Democratic governor. The state has swung far to the right. I mean, what do you think is going to happen here? His statement this afternoon that he thought the bill was extreme would seem to suggest that he might veto it. Right. Well, this is always going to be a battle about what's extreme. That is why we see Republicans focusing on this 20-week abortion ban. They're trying to get back the magic from 10 years ago, the quote-unquote partial birth abortion ban that lost Democrat seats. Each side is trying to portray the other as extreme. So I think when you hear a Democrat say that a bill is extreme, that's a sign that he may come out against it, and that's really a credit to the kind of uh, pressure that's being put on it. But I just want to address something that Chairman Steele said, former Chairman Steele said, which is, you know, that the states need to decide this. The only thing that is allowing women in Mississippi, in Texas, in Alabama and Wisconsin, where all these laws have been passed, that is allowing them to still exercise their constitutional rights, is the Supreme Court federal government pushing back on access to contraception and to birth control. I'm sorry, and to abortion. Um, so if, you know, it's great to talk about states' rights, but ultimately, you know, they, there's a saying that your rights should not depend on your zip code, and that's really in play here as well. Well, it is also a testament to the judicial branch being where everything is happening in America right now. Erin Carmone and Michael Steele, thank you both for your time. Okay. After the break, what with all the name-calling, fear-mongering, and race-baiting, Rush Limbaugh has a lot on his plate. Where did he find the time to pen an award-winning children's book? That's next.